Hey there, people. So today I am bringing you another big one. This is my Terraria Wall of Flesh Expert Mode Guide covering normal mode as well. I'll be covering the boss, how to spawn it, strategies, armor, weapons, and other preparation. The fight itself I will show, and I will cover drops at the end, what you get from the boss. So uh, this is a very detailed guide, including the guide voodoo doll summoning item, the demon heart expert drop. It is suitable for expert mode, applicable for normal as well. It's just less necessary to super prepare in, ex uh, in normal mode. Uh, whereas expert, you'd better be pretty prepared. So uh, I will explain wherever there are differences between normal and expert modes and game versions on different platforms. Um, and I will include timestamps for each section of this video in the video description. So let's first talk about the boss. The wall of flesh is literally a giant flesh wall. And uh, it has a mouth in the middle and two eyes above and below the giant mouth. Uh, once it's spawned, it sweeps sideways across the underworld in one direction, pursuing you, the player. It also instantly inflicts the horrified debuff, uh, which prevents you from fleeing. Uh, so if you try to teleport away, you'll actually instantly die. If you try to leave the underworld, you'll just be pulled back again by its tongue. It also has many small mouths on tendrils that are called the hungry, uh, and it fires lasers from those giant eyes. Uh, the hungry, the little mouths, will attempt to attack the player, and uh, also the big mouth will burp worm-like leeches that will chase after you. Uh, the leeches do drop hearts. In normal mode, those leeches, they look like the worms that you find underground, um, they will always drop hearts in normal mode. It's only a 1 in 5 chance in expert mode. Uh, the hungry also have a 75% chance to drop uh, hearts, so uh, those can be helpful to grab, although it's going to be kind of tough because it's pretty frenetic. So the wall itself moves faster and its lasers fire faster the more it is damaged. So the more you hurt it, the harder it gets in terms of uh, continuing the fight. The hungry also becomes stronger as you damage it more. In expert mode, the hungry respawn quickly after you kill them and the wall itself moves much, much faster when it's very close to death, uh, which you're going to see towards the end of the video. Um, defeating the wall of flesh changes the world into hard mode. Essentially, hard mode is a whole new quest. Uh, you kind of sort of almost start over. You get new enemies, new items, new ores new bosses and even a new biome called the Hallow if you haven't been there yet. Uh, it also creates, when you defeat the Wall of Flesh and enter into hard mode, it creates two diagonal stripes of Hallow and either Corruption or Crimson, depending on your world, in a V shape from the center of the world, which uh, I'd be pretty close to here. <laughs> My original spawn point just over here. Uh, at the very, very bottom, it'll make a V all the way up. So by the time you get to the surface, it's going to be way over uh, to either side. But anyway, um, it does that. And uh, also, once you get into hard mode, the corruption, the crimson, and the hallow, again, corruption, dep crimson, depending on your world, and the hallow that's new newly added uh, spread much more aggressively and actually can take over the whole world if you don't take preventative measures or uh, undo the damage, so to speak. So let's first uh, talk about spawning um, the wall of flesh. The guide voodoo doll, I have one in my inventory here. I actually have a ton of these because I spent a bunch of time uh, preparing my arena, quite a bunch of time. Uh, so you get this from voodoo demons in the underworld, aka hell. Uh, when you kill voodoo demons, which are just demons that happen to be carrying one of these dolls in their feet, um, you kill them, you get the doll that they're carrying, and uh, you can use that to summon the wall of flesh. Be very, very careful not to kill those voodoo demons above, if they're carrying a doll, don't kill them above open lava because it's when the guide doll goes in the lava that the wall of flesh is summoned. So if you kill them above open lava and the, the doll falls in, it can summon the wall of flesh. And if you're not prepared, that's a problem. <laughs> um, the guide must also be alive before you summon the wall of flesh because uh, basically you throw the doll in the lava the guide is then sacrificed and killed, which summons the wall of flesh. So you need to have a guide alive in order to do that. Um, normally, you will, as I say, need to throw the doll into lava in the underworld to summon the wall. It does actually have to be, uh, I believe, in the underworld specifically. Um, if you're not in the underworld, it won't work. 
uh, and also, of course, it has to be Lava. Now, uh, there is an exception to that. If you're playing on mobile, uh, you can simply select the doll and use it while in the Underworld. Again, uh, I believe you do have to be in the Underworld. Then you can just click it here. Um, but in the Underworld, <laughs> on mobile, you can do that. Otherwise, all other platforms, you have to actually throw it in the Lava. Uh, so to resummon the wall later on, if you've already defeated it or if you failed and you want to do it again, again, your guide has to be alive and you just use another doll. So you can keep getting dolls in the Underworld from the Voodoo Demons. You can keep summoning the Wall of Flesh indefinitely because your guide will respawn as long as you have a valid house for him. Uh, he will only, the guide will only respawn if you have a valid NPC house that meets all the requirements. And of course, my prisons do the job. <laughs> like this, your house might be nicer. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the other thing is that no events can be active. If you have like a goblin army or some other event going on, uh, then you cannot do it as well, uh, certain invasion events. Um, some events will only actually appear, you'll only get the indicator that the event is actually active if you're near your original spawn point, uh, which is usually, you know, where you start, near your village. Um, yeah, so it will not work if there's an event uh, active, the guide actually, I mean, the guide will not respawn if there's an event active. Generally, uh, NPCs will not spawn while a, an event like a goblin army is active. So uh, let's talk about the wall itself. As I said earlier, the direction, uh, the wall of flesh sweeps across the world. The direction that it moves is actually determined by where you are when you spawn it. So uh, you'll notice I happen to have the compass that's useful, um, which will tell you which side of the world you're on, whether you're east or west. Uh, if you're on the east side, if you're to the right, then it will sweep left. If you're on the west side to the left, then it will sweep Right, so um, know that before you spawn the wall, which way it's going to go uh, is going to affect you quite a lot during the battle. Um, because if you only prepare uh, your arena one direction, then and you do it in the wrong direction, it's going to come the other way and you're going to die, <laughs> probably. Um, so it's determined by where you are when you spawn it. I'm uh, I'm east currently. If I throw it throw the doll in the lava this side, then the wall will come this way, which is what I plan to do, by the way. Uh, whereas if I go over uh, far enough that way, of course, you have to be in the under underworld. Um, then I can be west, throw it in the lava, it's going to come this way, um, towards the east. So, um, yeah, uh, to maximize the space available to fight it, you're going to want to start uh, farther in one direction or the other. If you really want lots of extra space, just go farther. Like I can keep going east all the way to the end of the east end of the world if I want to, um, and throw it in the lava in the underworld there. And then it's going to have basically the entire map or all the way to the west, and it'll come the other way, all the way. Um, yeah, so you can, if you want to, actually have it, you know, have the entire space of the underworld available to you. Uh, by doing that, by going to one extreme end, and it'll come back towards the other way, just so you know, uh, if you want to maximize your space. Uh, the wall of flesh itself can only be damaged, the actual wall can only be damaged by hitting the eyes or the mouth. Uh, the eyes have lower defense. In normal mode, they actually have zero, zero defense, uh, but they always have lower defense, so it's better to target the eyes. Uh, you will do more damage because they have lower defense. If you get behind the boss, the wall, it takes up the entire underworld. If you get behind it, it will grab you with its tongue. Again, like if you try to flee the underworld, uh, you will be grabbed by the tongue and pulled to the wall, which is going to hurt a lot. It inflicts massive damage if that happens. Um, and it also throws you in front of the wall anyway, so getting behind it, it's not good to try to get behind it. <laughs> and again, if you try to teleport away, you'll be killed instantly. The wall itself is immune to the poisoned, on fire, cursed inferno, venom, shadow flame, and confused debuffs. That's a lot of them. Notice it's not immune to frost burn though, so you can use that. Uh, the hungry though are only immune to confused, so you can actually use any debuff inducing weapons or buffs against the hungry. Um, so including fire based weapons, those little mouths, the hungry, you can hit them with fire based weapons and that'll work and whatever other debuffs other than confused as well. 
So arena, let's talk about the arena. The standard approach is a very long bridge to run along while fighting the wall uh, because the wall is always moving, so you need to be always moving. So that's what I've done. Very, very long bridge. Um, you can see here. And alternatively, uh, you can also do a long minecart track that will work as well. Um, minecart will travel a little bit faster. If you're on one of the updated platforms, uh, you will want to use the craftable minecart. There's a minecart you can craft rather than the default one. That will move a little faster. Uh, Pre-update, you actually get the faster one anyway. It's the only one. Um, but since the update, you get a default slower one, uh, and you can craft one that's a little bit faster. So uh, in terms of how long this bridge can be, well, you see mine is incredibly, incredibly long. It's like 6,000 blocks or something. Um, it's recommended to make it at least 500 blocks in normal mode, and in expert, you may need 1,000 to 2,000 or even more. Um, and yeah, you can make it out of platforms or you can make it out of solid blocks. So platforms will allow you to easily target all the different sections. You can hit um, you know, the eye if it's down here, whereas if you use solid blocks, your weapons are going to hit the actual uh, solid blocks. On the other hand, uh, the way that the Wall of Flesh works is that um, it actually sort of links up it looks for solid blocks and it will actually if you use solid blocks like this uh, it will basically center itself on those on that uh, bridge which is useful for knowing uh, and having available the places where you are going to target it so uh, I went with solid blocks for that reason it's up to you uh, one thing I you you'll notice I actually put in little platform sections once in a while just a couple blocks wide because if you run into uh, lava slimes they will drop lava when you kill them and uh, you don't want a bunch of lava building up on your bridge. So um, yeah, so that's why I went with that. Uh, on mobile, actually, that thing about the wall adjusting to the height does not actually take place. Um, on the other hand, it will. Sometimes you'll get enemies spawning under your solid bridge, so that's another reason to have a solid bridge. But on mobile, it does not actually adjust. Um, the height based on the bridge like it does on other platforms so that's another consideration as well um, but it makes it easier to target the eyes on other platforms other than mobile so uh, if you are using a bridge like I am make sure you leave lots of space above it so you can maneuver you're going to want to jump out of the way of the lasers and so on so um, that's why I did it this way and I originally actually had one up high and then I ended up making it lower. Uh, you want to have lots of space to maneuver. Um, and also you may have noticed around the actual initial part of my bridge I had some campfires placed every so often because those will help you with your regeneration. You can also use heart lanterns. Uh, you could have occasional honey pools if you want to. Um, stars in a bottle if you're using magic weapons to help with your mana regeneration. And, uh, oh, right. I switched this out. So, before I get myself killed talking while running, um, yeah, those will all help with your regeneration and so on. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to get onto the uh, armor and weapons and other gear, and uh, we'll be right back with that. Alright, so let's talk gear. Uh, as far as armor, molten armor is most often going to be recommended because it has the highest defense in pre-hard mode. Of course, that's made from Hellstone. Um, but there are other options that you can use, especially for non-melee users. If you're a me melee player, it's a pretty obvious choice to go with the molten armor. Um, if you're a magic player, you could still do it. I mean, pre-hard mode, you can mix and match your classes a little more. It matters a little less. Uh, but if you're a magic user, you might want to use meteor or jungle armor because those will give you boosts for your magic powers. Um, your magic weapons will do a little more damage, and uh, jungle armor also gives you more mana to work with. Uh, but they have lower defense, so that's a bit of a trade-off. I actually am using um, magic. I'm using the meteor set. Uh, I just, I'm just kind of fond of it for whatever reason. Um, you can see it. It does give a boost to magic damage. Uh, it also allows you to use the space gun if you're really desperate as a backup weapon. Um, I actually don't really recommend it though uh, because you're probably not going to want to use the space gun. It's not that good <laughs> against the wall of flesh, but if you're focused on doing like a magic only playthrough, in that case uh, having that space gun as a backup is, is a good choice. Uh, but you might also want to go with the jungle armor for the extra mana. 
Um, now, if you are a ranged player, Necro Armor is basically the only uh, specialized set for ranged players in pre-hard mode. It's a good option, and ranged uh, is a good option in general for this battle. Uh, that set will give you uh, both a bonus as far as uh, reduced ammo consumption and also uh, bonus damage as well. So is it damage or critical strike? Anyway, it's one or both. Um, and also, of course, if you're playing as a summoner, the only option is the bee armor. Uh, bee armors can be tough. <laughs> summoners can be tough against the wall of flesh, uh, especially an expert. Um, and yeah, the B armor does not exist on 3DS, so that's not an option for you 3DS people. Unfortunately, you'll have to go with something else. Uh, you can also use Crimson armor. Uh, it does have the regeneration boost, which can be helpful. Uh, Shadow armor is an alternative for melee players. It gives you more uh, speed and uh, damage boosts instead of the defense boost. So uh, let's talk weapons, though. So the easiest best option is really to defeat the queen bee first um, and use bee nades and or the bee gun uh, and also if you're on the updated platforms there's also the bee's knees bow uh, which is a ranged weapon the bee gun is a magic weapon and those bee weapons are really powerful against the wall of flesh and also uh, particularly in expert mode they're going to be particularly helpful and I'm going to give you some tips on exactly how and when to use those in expert mode. Um, you can also venture into the underworld of course ahead of time before fighting the wall of flesh to get some more powerful weapons there as well. Uh, most effective option though is to use as many bee nades as possible. You'll get them as direct drops from the queen bee as well as uh, you can craft them with beeswax and grenades. Uh, Molotov cocktails are also an excellent option. You can even do dynamite. <laughs> it can be effective if used with a combination of good timing and, ex and an explosive proof bridge slash arena. Um, you could even use dynamite, but that's a risky approach. You don't want to hit yourself with dynamite. And uh, the only readily available blocks that are explosive proof in pre-hard mode are your dungeon bricks. Uh, your dungeon bricks, you, you don't want to mess up, especially if you're on one of the updated platforms, you don't want to destroy the base, the actual platform surface of your dungeon, because you're going to need that later to spawn the lunatic cultist much, much later in the game. I guess you can take this stuff above that if you want or, or even take parts of the dungeon lower down if you really want to use explosives, but uh, it's, it's not my recommended approach. Um, in terms of class-based weapons, so most melee weapons will risk serious contact damage, but there are some good options uh, that have a bit of range. The Dark Lance is an excellent one, um, so I picked up one of those while I was making my arena down there. Uh, looking around for shadow chests and stuff. And that's another thing. Um, you'll probably want to clean out all those houses that are along your route because, you, again, you can end up with lava flowing in and stuff. So uh, so you might want to explore all those houses beforehand. Um, so, yeah, there's some good weapons like that. There's um, some of the other ones actually in the underworld aren't that great uh, because, again, the, the wall of flesh itself is is not uh, or, well, it is immune to fire, so you can't hit it with fire-based stuff that you find in the underworld, although they are pretty um, powerful weapons down there. Uh, so the Sun Fury Flail that you can find down there is also an option if you like flails. Um, and uh, on the updated platforms, yo-yos are excellent, actually. So I do have a Cascade here. Uh, in fact, both of these, these were... I didn't reforge these. These both came godly. Uh, I actually got several Cascades, but only one of them came godly. Uh, Cascade, uh, Yo-Yo is a good option. Some of the other uh, more powerful Yo-Yos can also work. Um, of course, you can combine those with a counterweight and a string uh, to give you some extra range and power there. And um, other good options for melee are the Bladed Glove, if you happen to get it from the Halloween event. Uh, or if you don't mind changing the time on your system to try to get it. Um, it's a very fast attack uh, weapon. And the, the Miramasa as well. Both of those can be particularly useful against the Hungry when uh, you're up close. Um, you might not want to go that close in against the wall itself. Uh, the Thorn Chakram, uh, which is sort of a boomerang, let's say. Um, you can make that from materials that you get in the jungle. Uh, that can also be a good, good option. Um, you're not 
probably going to be in a confined space. It bounces around nicely. Uh, so the lack of a confined space is actually a problem for that one in there. Uh, but um, it's still a good weapon. Still pretty powerful. And again, the hungry are not immune to poison and it can do that to them. So uh, that can be useful too. Um, yeah, that's about it for, for melee recommendations. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, and of course, uh, if you're playing in expert mode actually, uh, and on the updated platforms, because expert's only on the updated platforms. Anyway, the beekeeper sword uh, with the hive pack, that's, uh, you get this from the queen bee as well. Um, those can be good options there too. Uh, for melee players, particularly an expert, because of that hive pack, that'll basically amp up the power of the bees. You'll get some of those bigger ones, uh, and so that becomes a better option um, for melee players in expert. Now, there are many ranged weapons that work rather well. Uh, the Molten Fury Bow, uh, I've got one of those, um, is something you can craft pretty readily. The Mini Shark uh, is reasonable. It's not great, but it's okay. Uh, it can get the job done. Um, it's going to be tougher in expert. In normal, the mini shark is going to do a good job, uh, but in expert, it's going to do less of a good job because of the high defense that the wall has in expert, and because defense counts for more in expert. So um, it's not going to do. It's not going to be as effective in expert mode, unfortunately. Um, the the mini shark, or sorry, the the molten fury can actually be pretty good, especially you'll probably want to combine that with hellfire arrows. Uh, you could use Frostburn arrows because both the Hungry and the Wall are not immune to Frostburn, uh, but you're probably going to want to use that with, with uh, Hellfire arrows just to maximize your damage. They've got that little explosive uh, thing going on too, which might help with the Hungry. Um, but also good options uh, if you're on one of the pre-update platforms. Of course, the Sharanga <laughs> is going to be amazing. Um, you can also use the Phoenix Blaster, uh, which is a craftable from the handgun and some Hellstone. Uh, and of course, the Star Cannon, if you're willing to uh, collect lots of stars, the Star Cannon is very, very powerful. Uh, so those are all good options. If you're on the updated platforms, the Bee's Knees Bow and the Hellwing Bow, both of those are going to be good options. The Hellwing uh, is inaccurate, but fires very quickly. Uh, it, accuracy is not going to be a huge deal, especially if you're trying to get the Hungry um, the Hellwing, if you use it with wooden arrows, both of these you're actually going to want to use with wooden arrows because they both convert the arrows. And these are, again, update only. Uh, that The Hellwing will convert them into bats, flying bats that pierce through, and it fires pretty quickly, so that can be pretty effective. Uh, the Bee's Knees is uh, the more powerful of the two in terms of base damage. If you use it with wooden uh, arrows, it will convert uh, those arrows into bees, and bees, as we've already said, are very powerful against the wall of flesh. Um, also, you know, the bees' knees is actually a pretty good option, uh, even if you're not using it with wooden arrows. You can use it with more powerful arrows, like um, hellfire arrows, and it will um, just be more powerful as a bow as well. So it's a good option there as well. Um, if you are using yeah, if you're using like standard bows, like the Molten Fury or some other regular bow, uh, again, um, Hellfire arrows, Jester's arrows can uh, pierce through the Hungry and hit the wall. Uh, unholy arrows will, they have a slightly more limited piercing, but they can uh, pierce a couple as well. Uh, so for bows that don't convert arrows, uh, those are kind of your go-tos, maybe Frostburn. Um, for guns particularly, uh, you are going to want to look at probably Meteor Shot. Uh, it's the most powerful in pre-hard mode. It also will do one pierce. The only problem is that uh, if you're using a really rapid fire gun, I'm not sure if the Mini Shark will, is actually fast enough to trigger it. Um, there is invulnerability frames involved and it can actually end up only hitting, uh, only some of the bullets hitting. Um, but if you're using a slower gun, definitely it's, it's no question. Uh, Phoenix Blaster, particularly, you're going to want to use Meteor Shark or Meteor Shot, uh, and also um, Silver Bullets are a good option. Uh, but if you are playing as a ranged player, you're going to want basically two full stacks of ammo at least, um, because you're going to go through a lot of ammo. It's it's a tough fight. Um, so piercing and explosives, ammo will help, and you're going to need a lot of it. 
Uh, also, on the current mobile and 3DS version, until mobile gets the update, I expect this will go away. But you can also use heart arrows with the bun or with the bows, which will stun the boss and make the fight much much easier. So if you are on uh, the pre-update mobile or if you're on 3DS, heart arrows can be very very useful there. Uh, basically, stun the boss and and kill it, <laughs> nice and easy. Uh, those you get from the Valentine's event. So. Um, Let's move on to magic weapons. So magic weapons, probably the best choice, which I actually don't have here, is the water bolt. Uh, although it's you know pretty slow and low damage, if you aim it right, it can do a lot of uh, multiple hits, and uh, you can kind of like shoot it up in the air, and it will fall, and it will score lots of hits on the way down, and then it can even if you have that solid bridge, it'll bounce back off and score some more hits. So that's why the Water Bolt can be very, very powerful. Uh, other magic options though are the Demon Scythe, which I did uh, pick up one of those while I was making my bridge as well. Um, and of course, keep in, keep in mind you can reforge your weapons to make them a little powerful. So these ones came as godly. Some of these I, I did do like did a little basic uh, reforging actually I got about this far and then I ran out of money so these ones not so much but um, yeah luckily uh, my demon scythe came as a good one um, so yeah you can reforge your weapons to increase their damage outputs as well um, and yeah the B gun of course B gun uh, aqua scepter actually will work uh, ruby or diamond staff can be okay uh, space gun again if you're with meteor armor it's a good backup weapon for magic users uh, but the B gun is is probably still going to be your most powerful option again uh, counts as a magic weapon very very powerful and you can buff that by using the hive pack if you're in expert mode in expert you can get the hive pack as well you will get the hive pack if you defeat the queen bee and uh, that will make that that much more powerful uh, and we'll also buff your bee nades <laughs> so that's uh, Definitely, um, you know, if you're not sure what to use bees, use the bees. <laughs> and uh, also, if you're in a crimson world, you can use the crimson rod, which creates those clouds that rain, uh, and that can do a little bit of extra damage as well. You only need to cast it every so often, and because uh, again, the wall of flesh is moving, so you'll have to, you know, do it every so often. But um, as it passes through, it's going to get a ton of damage if you use that crimson rod. So uh, as far as summoners, uh, the last class I'll talk about for weapons, actually not the last class, one more. Um, summoners will want to use the Imp Staff, uh, which I do have one of those here, even though I'm not playing as a summoner. And um, yeah, that's, that's a pretty good obvious choice. You're gonna wanna use that if you are a summoner with the B armor again. And um, you'll wanna use some summoning potions and the Bewitching Table. If you're on an updated platform, you can get the Bewitching Table to boost that a little further. Uh, summoning potions will give you one extra, bewitching table will give you another. And um, also if you are on PC only for the time being at least, uh, this may be coming to other platforms later, but on PC you can also use the staffs from the Old One Army event. You can use the sentry staffs, um, so that can be a boost for summoners as well. Uh, the ballista and explosive trap rods are the recommended ones. And yeah, last class I'll talk about as far as weapons is actually the throwing class. So uh, throwing weapons are actually viable still at this point in the game and probably not any longer after you defeat the Wall of Flesh, but uh, kind of the last thing you're really gonna be able to do well with throwing weapons is fight the Wall of Flesh. Besides the bee nades and the molotovs that I already talked about, you can also use spiky balls and explosives. Again, I did kind of mention explosives. Um, and again, you can build a bridge out of explosive explosion proof dungeon bricks. Uh, you could even make it out of hellstone, <laughs> which is also explosion proof, uh, but you'll definitely want your uh, obsidian skin potions or something if you're going to do that. And if you are in the updated platforms, the other explosive proof, proof brick that you can get in pre-hard mode is the desert fossils, actually. Uh, that's only on the updated ones. Um, but again, keep in mind, do not destroy the foundation of your dungeon the actual platform where you found the old man. Don't destroy that if you're on the updated platforms because that's where the lunatic cultist will later spawn and he won't spawn if you destroy it. So keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a few things you can use if you're a thrower. Uh, B-Nades, Molotovs, spiky balls, explosives. 
Uh, and let's move along to accessories and buffs. So obsc obsidian skin potions are an excellent, extremely good idea uh, because you're going to want to avoid damage from both lava and from fire blocks. Uh, and that's one of the only things that protects against both. Um, lava waders also work well and will protect against both. It's a limited time that they'll protect against lava, but it's like 14 seconds, so that's pretty good. Uh, those are your two options. Um, easiest is definitely the obsidian skin potion, unless you happen to get the stuff for the lava waders. Um, I found that's not that common, <laughs> but uh, obsidian skin potions you can make fairly easily. So bring a lot of them, because um, again, if you're fighting lava slimes along the way, they'll drop lava, and lava does a lot of damage and lights you on fire, so you don't want to be damaged by lava. You want your obsidian skin potions or your lava waders. Uh, you can also use a lava charm to protect you from the lava itself, but it will not protect you from uh, fire blocks like hellstone bricks and hellstone. Uh, obsidian skull or obsidian shield will protect you from those blocks, but not from the lava. So, uh, yeah, you can combine potentially a lava charm and an obsidian skull or an obsidian shield, but you're going to be a lot better off just using obsidian skin potions or lava waders. Uh, also, any accessories, and you, the skin potions also um, will, you know, save an accessory slot versus the lava waders. So, uh, other accessories are things that improve damage, defense, or mobility. Of course, those are all going to be things that help. So uh, things like Hermes boots and derived from that uh, to speed you up. Horizontal movement speed is more important than vertical jump height for this particular boss fight. So keep that in mind. Those boots are made for running. <laughs> and uh, the boots are going to be really useful. And so particularly, you're going to want lightning or frost spark boots, if at all possible, because those are the fastest ones. They combine the uh, anklet uh, and the egglet of the wind to boost your running boots a little faster yet. And also, um, those have the rocket boots built into them, right? So um, that'll help you with your vertical jumping as well. Uh, and also any other speed boosting accessories and buffs are going to be very recommended, particularly in Expert, because near the end of the fight, you're going to need it. <laughs> and uh, the, the wall will move really, really fast right towards the end. So also swiftness potions. Uh, if you're in a crimson world, you can use the panic necklace uh, because when you get hurt, it'll give you a speed boost. Um, that's kind of an if you have extra slot situation. Uh, also cloud in a bottle or whatever uh, in a bottle or a balloon is still useful for the double jump for jump dodging lasers and so on because uh, you are going to want to dodge those lasers a bit and the hungry and so on. So, you know, the double jump is still useful. It's just not quite as important as the horizontal speed. Um, so you'll see here I actually have the frost spark boots and I have a pink horseshoe balloon just happened to be the stuff that I got. And for damage boosting, I have the shark tooth necklace that is uh, on the updated platforms only. Um, yeah, increases armor penetration, so effective damage boost. Uh, and things like the band of regeneration can still be helpful. It will uh, boost your life regeneration. And in expert, uh, also the shield of Cthulhu. Um, I'm a fan of that because of uh, if you get stuck, you can use that little um, dash to get right back up to running speed. So that's quite useful as well. Um, another expert only item uh, is the worm scarf. If you're in a corruption world, this is not a corruption world, so I don't have that. Uh, but the worm scar scarf effectively will minimize your damage taken. Uh, it will reduce the amount of damage you take. Also, if you are a melee user, you might want to consider feral claws. So those are all things. Uh, keep in mind you can reforge your accessories, which as you can see I did. <laughs> I made them all warding because this is expert and defense matters. Uh, so you'll either want to go for warding or menacing. Menacing to maximize your damage output or warding to maximize your defense. Uh, and then there is, of course, potions. So uh, health potions, obviously you're going to want health potions. <laughs> um, Iron skin, regeneration, and swiftness potions are pretty easy ones that will help uh, give you a nice little boost as well. You're going to want some kind of food for the well, but fed buff, particularly in expert, because you actually get penalized if you don't have food in expert mode. 
um, but it'll still help in normal as well. If you're using a bow, the archery potion, uh, the inferno potion is actually uh, very effective against the hungry, those little mouths on the tendrils, but it requires you to get the hotline fishing hook, so you're going to have to do a lot of fishing quests if you really want that. It's, it's not probably worth the trouble unless you happen to get it already anyway. Um, a water walking potion or a stack of water walking potions can be a good idea if you're worried about running out of bridge room, if you didn't make your bridge as long enough or you're worried that it's not long enough. Um, water walking potion can help you there. You can use it to walk on lava, uh, although I definitely still combine it with obsidian skin potions just to be safe. Uh, you can also use uh, gravitation potions and or feather fall potions any of those and all of those can even be used in place of making a bridge or a minecart track. Um, I wouldn't really, you know, if, you, if you're just short on time and you don't want to go to all the trouble because honestly it took me a, an incredibly long time to, con to construct that uh, bridge in my arena. So if you don't want to take all that time, you can do that. You can use uh, water walking and or gravitation and or feather fall along with obsidian skin potions. I'm definitely going to recommend that, especially in that case. You can do that um, to get away with not making the bridge. Uh, also, a good idea is a calming potion, a stack of calming potions <laughs> to reduce uh, the spawning rates of the other enemies so that you can focus more on the wall itself and the hungry. Uh, there are tons of other potions that can be used. Check out my potions guide if you need more help. Uh, but just as a demonstration, look at all these potions I have. Now, some of these I just got like from crates and stuff. Uh oh, I'm, I better actually leave the surface because I've got a blood moon again while recording. Um, but yeah, I, this is just like, as I was saying, healing, regeneration, iron skin, swiftness. Those are your basic ones. Uh, I'm going to be demonstrating bows. So I've got archery shine so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, obsidian skin potions, I've said many times. I am going to use some magic weapons. So I've got magic regeneration and magic power. Uh, I've also got Rage Potions, that's Crimson only, from Fish, uh, Ammo Reservation, Summoning Potions, uh, Calming Potions, as I just said, Heart Reach to help you pick up those hearts, Life Force to give you some extra um, health, uh, Titan Potion, I just picked this up, I don't really need it, that's more for melee players to increase your knockback, uh, I just had that. I found it somewhere. <laughs> and uh, Endurance Potion, this is definitely helpful, um, it's kind of a addendum to the iron skin if you will reduces your damage taken and a thorns potion again i found one of those this is a crimson world i can't make them but um but i did find one <laughs> and uh so yeah those are just some examples you can make even more potions than that if you really want um to get to maximize your edge uh, and also on the updated platforms uh, you can get a sharpening station an ammo box and or a bewitching table Sharpening station is going to be most useful for melee players. Ammo box is going to be most useful for uh, ranged players and bewitching table for summoners, although really the bewitching table can help everybody because you can use minions even if you're not a summoner. And uh, that's why I've got summoning potions. So I can get three minions, default one, summoning potion two, and bewitching table is number three. Uh, so let's quickly talk strategies. I have obviously talked a lot about the boss already. Um, in normal mode particularly, you're going to want to target the hungry first because you can wipe them out and focus on the wall itself. If you're an expert, keep in mind that those hungry will respawn. So you may still want to tar target them, um, but they're going to respawn. So it's kind of less of a big deal whether you target the hungry. Uh, but you may, you know, if you're doing, if you have enough damage output, by all means, take them out and focus on the wall. Uh, it's going to be tough to take them out because of their respawn rates though. And remember to always stay in front of the wall. I warned you about that tongue. Always stay in front of the wall. Uh, but don't be so far in front that uh, it pulls you back because there is a range. If you're too far ahead of the wall, it will eventually grab you with its tongue and pull you back anyway, as if you're trying to escape it, basically. Um, and of course, keep moving and keep jumping to avoid the lasers. And I'm just going to cut here for a second, and I'll be right back with the actual boss fight. All right, so I am just about ready here. I did put my bewitching table down, and as I say, I've got campfires along the way here. I'm going to want my buffs, of course. Um, and now that I've got those, I can summon my minions. I can get three of these guys, even though I'm not a summoner. It's supposed to be three. Uh, or do I have to use this manually? 
know, maybe it just gives me the same buff. I don't know. Anyway, I guess I've got two. Um, so here we go. I've got my voodoo doll. And I am actually going to, uh, I know you guys like me to be zoomed in, but I'm going to zoom out so that I can see um, what I'm doing a little better. <laughs> so I'm going to try to demonstrate all of these different weapons. So this is the Dark Lance, obviously with a melee armor set and boosts and stuff, it could be uh, doing a little more damage. There's the Cascade. I am wearing meteor armor, so <laughs> not going to want to play with melee weapons too long. Um, so I'm going to move on to ranged. I've got the mini shark. You can see there, um, it does all right. And yeah, this is why you need so much room above uh, your bridge, because you need to be able to hit at least one of those eyes at any given time. I mean, you can shoot in the mouth too, but uh, it's going to be more effective if you shoot in the eye. So um, let's go with the Molten Fury. Now, which bows? Oh, I've got Frostburn arrows in here. And yeah, it's not an auto-fire bow, this one. So but you can inflict Frostburn. In fact, it looks like you can inflict uh, maybe on multiple parts. Yeah. Um, but you might want to go with like Hellfire or something instead. I actually do have some of those. Is this a good idea? <laughs> Here we go. Swap those in. I guess we'll store them there. Yeah, see Hellfire is, is going to be more powerful. Um, but let's show you the Hell Wing Bow. So again, you can use these special bows even with regular arrows, and that's where um, you know the Hellfire because of its rapid fire and like accuracy doesn't matter too much against the Wall of Flesh. So uh, that can be useful. Also, the Bee's Knees. Um, Hellfire is auto fire. Bee's Knees is not. Of course, if you're on uh, one of the pre-updated platforms, it's it's a no-brainer. You're gonna want to use the Sharanga <laughs> with uh, no matter what kind of arrows you feel like using. Probably wooden arrows because it converts them into super powerful ones. Um, that's a no-brainer for sure. Uh, but let's just show you these two quickly with uh, actual wooden arrows because they're going to convert those. So that's the bats. Bats are pretty powerful. Um, they have the piercing. And let's trot out some bees. Oh god, I got stuck. Oh god, oh god. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> now I'm going to have to focus on my dodging a little more. Um, star cannon, of course. Super powerful. Um, I actually don't want to use that too much because then I'm going to actually kill this thing before I want to. <laughs> but yeah, Star Cannon obviously is only limited by the number of stars you can collect. There we go, finally a heal. Um, and yeah, of course, at the end, you're going to want to use the bees. It's going to use... So if you're playing an expert, keep the bees till the end. That's my recommendation. Uh, because it gets really fast at the end, and you're going to want to kill it fast before it comes in and kills you. It's essentially the strategy. So keep those bees to the end if you're playing on Expert. So oh God, it moves really, really fast right at the end, and you want to be prepared for that. You want to be really, really prepared for that. So there you go. That's how you beat it, and I guess I can zoom back in now. And the spirits of light and dark have been released and I actually stored my pickaxe in here because I like to keep it in number five that's just me being weird and uh, yeah so I'm a little neurotic oh god I've got a mimic already too look at that um, so yeah it uh, as far as drops your drops will be in a box this box right here 
<laughs> and uh, if you're in a corruption world uh, and or on a pre-update platform, it's going to be Demonite Brick. Um, so I'm just going to start from the top as far as drops. Uh, drops, when you die or when you kill the Wall of Flesh, uh, the drops are left in that enclosed box that I mentioned. Uh, Demonite bricks, if you're on a pre-updated platform or if you're in a corruption world, if you're on an updated platform and it's a crimson world, it can be crimtain bricks as I had there. Uh, the Wall of Flesh will always drop the Pwn Hammer, which can be used to destroy uh, demon and crimson altars, which will then bring new ores into the world, uh, up to three new ores. And uh, then uh, you can destroy more and just get more of them. But each time you destroy an altar, it uh, seeds in one block of either crimson or corruption or hallow. So you're going to basically gradually corrupt your world the more you uh, break. Uh, another option is to save up crates before you defeat the Wall of Flesh and use those. Uh, just open the crates in order to get uh, the new ores, which I actually did here. Uh, here we go. So I've saved up some crates and I can I should be able to now open those. Um, and yeah, I need to right click them here. Yeah, and see you can get you can get new ores that way. <laughs> so that's just something to be aware of. Uh, but uh, back to the drops, uh, the Wall of Flesh will also always drop five to 15 healing potions and eight gold. Uh, will always drop one of seven items. It's a one in six chance that it will drop either the Breaker Blade, the Clockwork Assault Rifle, or the Laser Rifle, uh, and a one in eight chance that, would, that it will drop any of the four class emblems, the warrior emblem, the sorcerer emblem, the ranger emblem, or the summoner emblem. Now, the summoner emblem does not exist on pre-update uh, platforms. It only exists on the updated platforms. So I would assume that that means um, that on the pre-updated platforms, it's probably just a one in six chance of any of those weapons or the, the three emblems, uh, but that wasn't clear. Um, of course, I was referencing the wiki on that. Um, it's also a 1 in 10 chance that it will drop the Wall of Flesh trophy and on the updated platforms only there's a separate 1 in 7 chance for it to drop the Wall of Flesh mask. Um, if you are in expert mode it always drops the treasure bag and uh, that treasure bag always includes the demon heart item. So you know what I'm just going to toss some stuff in here so that I have inventory space again. Oh I got 10 healing potions apparently. Um, so yeah, the treasure bag always includes the demon heart. And there we go, the pwn hammer is in there. I happen to get the ranger emblem and the breaker blade, uh, which is cool, I guess. <laughs> um, and uh, so yeah, the demon heart expert only item can only be used once. It's the only expert mode item that is consumable and it permanently gives the player a sixth accessory slot. Boom, sixth accessory slot, which can only be used in expert world. So if you take an expert player who has this extra slot into a normal world, that just won't be functional. Um, but it will still be there when you go back to an expert world. So there you go. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's the special item that you get from defeating the Wall of Flesh and Expert. The Demon Heart gives you the extra accessory slot, which of course is incredibly useful, particularly in Expert. Uh, and again, you always get the Pwn Hammer and some healing potions. And uh, I thought I was only supposed to get one of these, but I actually got two. I got one weapon and an emblem. I don't know. Uh, Wiki said it's always one in one of seven, but yeah, I got two. So. Take that for what you will. Anyway, it is very useful to farm the Wall of Flesh for emblems. Uh, for the Clockwork Assault Rifle is a great gun. The Laser Rifle is a pretty good magic weapon at the beginning of hard mode. Um, and even just for money, because you get a decent amount of money for killing the Wall of Flesh as well. Uh, and you can sell these extra items. If you have extras, you can sell them and make money that way too. So uh, farming the Wall of Flesh is, is a good idea, actually. Um, you might want to do it right away when you get into hard mode, you know, fight a couple more times, get the stuff that you didn't get, or uh, just wait a while, get some, you know, new armor and then give it a try. It's going to be easier, obviously, uh, with hard mode equipment. Uh, these emblems give a big damage boost. As you can see at Ranger Emblem, 15% increased range damage. It's the same for the other classes. You get the emblem for the class that you 
uh, R and it's going to give you um, a damage boost for that class. So uh, that will be stackable with other boosts. Uh, you're going to want to probably farm the Wall of Flesh to get whichever one applies to whichever type of character you're playing as. Uh, you don't automatically get the one you want <laughs> or the one you're playing as. Uh, you will just have to farm the Wall of Flesh to get the appropriate emblem. And of course, on the pre-update platforms, you actually need all three uh, in order to make the Avenger emblem as well. Uh, and then you can stack uh, one emblem with the Avenger emblem uh, and maximize your damage output that way. So, um, good idea to farm the Wall of Flesh. Uh, these emblems give you a big damage boost. The Avenger emblem also gives you a big damage boost. And you can also craft um, other various damage boosting accessories from those emblems later on as well. So I do recommend uh, farm the Wall of Flesh when you're ready <laughs> and get stuff and boost your damage output because you're going to need that in hard mode and particularly in expert. So I uh, hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.